Hello, we're going to take a fairly quick look at the structure of atoms. A lot of this has been done in chemistry, so if this is going a bit too fast, you can refer back to the chemistry videos on the structure of atoms. But here we have an element, or the atoms of an element. You can see just by the colour that they're all the same, or I've tried to show that they're all the same. And if we expand out one of those atoms, we can see the structure looks a little bit like this. The scale of this is all wrong. Every single diagram you've ever seen of an atom or showing the protons and electrons and so on, the scale is wrong. Because even if I drew the nucleus as a tiny little full stop like that, the electrons would be way off the page if, I, if we use the right scale. So this is a model, a model of the atom and how we think it looks. Okay, so in the center there we've got a structure, which hopefully you are quite aware of by now. But in the center there we have the nucleus, and around the outside of the nucleus we have these things called shells. And on the shells we have electrons. On this diagram here you can see that there are six electrons there, as I'm just highlighting. And they occupy the shells. Now we need to have an idea of the size of the atom. So here we've got a diagram of our atom, and the first thing we're going to look at is the fact that they are very, very, very small. And we'll see what we mean by that when we put in some numbers on this diagram. So this little uh, region there, this is the radius of our atom. And the radius has a size of about 1 times 10 to the minus 10 meters. That's the same as 1 nanometer. And 1 nanometer, what's that in meters? Well, if you write, if you write the whole thing out, it would be 0 0.9 zeros and a 1. So that's how big the radius of an atom is. It's very tiny. You can't say big, you have to say very small. This is the atomic radius. Now, what if we were take, to take a look at the nucleus? Well, if we look at the radius of that, this is the nucleus, and the radius of this is about one ten thousandth the radius of the whole atom. So that is much, much, much tinier than the actual size of the whole atom. So you can see that every diagram that we ever do cannot be to the correct scale. We wouldn't be able to fit it on the page. This is about 1 times 10 to the minus 14 meters, and I'm not even going to bother writing it out with a bunch of zeros because there's so many zeros to write. So you can see atoms are very, very, very small, and this is an idea of their kind of sizes. We should be able to label atoms, and we have done this before in our chemistry videos. So as I said before, you could go back to the atomic structure videos in chemistry if you're not sure, but we'll go through it again now anyway. In the center of the uh, atom, we have our nucleus, and around the outside we have shells, and those shells we can also refer to, refer to as energy levels, and we'll see why that is in a moment. The nucleus contains most of the mass of the atom. It contains over 99.9% .9 of the mass of the atom. And it's all concentrated in that little nucleus there. The other thing about the nucleus is it's made of protons and neutrons. And the protons, as you may remember, have a positive charge. So the whole nucleus, in fact, has a positive charge. The other information we need to know are the labels for inside and outside the atom. So here we have our protons in red, our neutrons in this green color, and electrons in gray. The relative charge on the protons is plus 1. And the relative mass, we say, is 1 as well. There's no charge on neutrons, but they have a relative mass of 1 as well. Electrons have a charge of minus 1, so it's the opposite of protons. And their mass, their relative mass, is very, very small. We or sometimes say it's too small to measure, or we say it's negligible. But either way, it's very, very small. Now we need to look at this idea of atoms and ions, what we mean by ions. Well, let's take an example of a lithium atom. And here you can see the lithium atom. It has in its nucleus three protons and it has three electrons in its shells. Protons have a positive charge, electrons have a negative charge, so we would say that this atom has balanced charges. There is no overall charge on this atom because we have the same number of positives and negatives, same number of protons and electrons. However, under certain circumstances, the atom can lose an electron. And this could be if it was taking part in a chemical reaction. But now we can see we have three protons with their positive charge and two electrons with their negative charge. So this is now no longer balanced. We have one more positive charge compared to negative, 
so it has a charge of plus one. This is now referred to as an ion, it's no longer an atom. Let's just move over there a little bit. And we often draw ions like this with square brackets and a charge in the top right corner. Okay, so we're going to look at atoms and isotopes now. And we can use the example of hydrogen. So here, here are atoms of hydrogen gas, or atoms of hydrogen in fact. And if the first one is hydrogen, what's the second one? Well, it's also hydrogen, and the third one is also hydrogen as well. We know this because each one of these atoms has one proton, and the proton number identifies the atom. So what's an isotope? Well, an isotope is when we have atoms of the same element, but they have different neutrons. So we could say they have the same number of protons, therefore they're the same element, the same number of electrons, However, they have a different number of neutrons. That's what makes them isotopes. If they have different numbers of neutrons, that means they have different mass numbers or different relative atomic masses. The other thing about having the same number of protons and same ele electrons is they have the same chemical properties. In other words, they will have the same kinds of chemical reactions as each other because their chemical reactions depend on the electrons and not on the number of neutrons. And then this is the final thing. This is the structure of atoms and how we link them to electromagnetic radiation. Now, this is not in the chemistry spec, so this is specific to physics. So this we haven't gone over before. But let's see what we mean by this. Here is our lithium atom. And as we know, we've got three protons and three electrons. We are going to look at what happens with the movement of electrons across energy levels. I've accidentally labelled the same shell twice. I meant to label different ones, but never mind. I think hopefully you understand what we mean. But these are the energy levels, often referred to as shells. And what can happen is that electrons in those energy levels can absorb electromagnetic radiation. So here we have some electromagnetic radiation hitting that electron. That electromagnetic radiation can be absorbed the atom, so the electron will gain energy and it can move to a higher energy level. So this electron, as you can see, has moved to a higher energy level. And by higher, we mean further away from the nucleus. Energy levels are higher the further you go away from the nucleus. But not only can we absorb electromagnetic radiation and move to higher levels, not only can we do that, but we can do the reverse as well. Electrons at higher energy levels can emit electromagnetic radiation as well. And when they emit electromagnetic radiation, they move to lower energy levels and therefore closer to the nucleus. So we can move closer to the nucleus or further away from the nucleus, whether depending on whether we absorb electromagnetic radiation or emit, in other words, give out electromagnetic radiation. Okay, so let's just make a quick note. When we move to higher energy levels, that's further from the nucleus. Okay, so that's uh, some quite quick summaries of details of the atom that we've visited in chemistry and something new that we need to know for physics on this slide here. So thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.